About three decades ago, when our only reference point for how planet systems worked was our own solar system, we thought we knew everything there was to know about planet formation. Everything seemed to be quite simple. Stone planets are near the sun, while gas and ocean planets are farther away, where it's much cooler. It seems quite logical and normal. However, with the discovery of exoplanets, our understanding has been turned on its head. It seems that giant gas planets could be very close to their stars. No wonder they are called hot Jupiters. How did they come to be? How did a liquid and gas planet manage to form so close to a star when its very substance should have evaporated? There are multiple hypotheses concerning this problem. A planet might have been formed far from the star and then moved or drifted towards it. Theoretically speaking, there can be a lot of interesting calculations, but we need to wait and see which of them will pan out. For now, we're saying the zoo of exoplanets. When you walk into the zoo, you see different animals. The evolutionary trajectory of how these creatures came to be in the Earth's biosphere is oftentimes hard to understand. Or, at the very least, it's not clear. The same way today's astronomers look at different types of planets and ask themselves, oh my god, how did all this diversity come to be? What was behind this process? Why are they so different? It comes as no surprise that many astronomers have shifted their interest from stars and galaxies to distant planets, which are so cool to study. The weirdest planets in the universe. Subscribe to our channel and support us by liking this video so that we could release the next episode sooner. First, how can we guess the type of climate, temperature, and rain on other planets? For example, does it rain stones or diamonds? How can we make a guess? The Doppler method allows us to estimate the planet's mass. The heavier the planet, the stronger it shifts its star. Furthermore, there is a method that helps to learn the size of a planet. But you need some luck to guess it right. Let's say we can observe solar eclipses from the Earth when the moon goes in front of the sun and overshadows it. Now, with a bit of luck, if the planet goes in front of a star, it would cover a part of the star's surface. It cannot cover the whole star. The planet is always smaller than the star. It always covers a star partially. During the eclipse, this makes the star reduce its brightness. It's what astronomers call the passing of a planet in front of a star or its transit. We call these planets transiting. One can guess the size of the planet based on how much brightness is reduced. This is how we know the size and mass. But what does this information give us? One needs to do some calculations. We start by calculating the average density of the planet. For example, in the solar system, there are two types of planets. Venus, Mars, and Earth are very dense. They are composed of stone with iron core and the average density of these planets is about 5 to 6 grams per centimeter cubed. That means stone and iron. But there are giant planets. Their average density is approximately 1 to 2 grams per centimeter cubed, meaning they are composed of water and gas. By calculating the average density of the planet, we can estimate what kind of material it's made of. By learning the distance from the star, we can calculate its temperature. Naturally, the closer a planet is to the star, the hotter it is. Professional astronomers have a very simple approach. There are some catalogs. Each catalog contains either names of authors, for example, Blise, or some abbreviations, for example, Bright Stars Catalog. A signifies the star itself. B is for the first discovered planet, and so on and so forth down the alphabet. 
So far, there haven't been identified any planet systems containing more than eight planets. Of course, it's not very convenient for the wide audience to pronounce such specific names without fully understanding them. This is why the International Astronomical Union has recently decided to give the most interesting and well-studied exoplanets names of people, to give amateur scientists the right to vote and choose more or less interesting names. For example, one of the planets, which is a few times older than the Earth, was given a name of Methuselah, an old name of a well-known biblical character. Other planets borrow their names from famous scientists, but these names should be double-checked. So the International Astronomical Union receives suggestions on how to name a planet or a star. It may or may not approve of them depending on whether a particular name is worthy to be given to a planet or a star. For example, a planet by the name of Koro T7b. B means that A is the star itself. The planets discovered later are then called B, C, D, and so forth in alphabetical order. And here we have Koro T. What is Koro T? That's the name of a small outer space telescope. Surprisingly, this telescope was launched by French astronomers to orbit the Earth. Everyone was skeptical at first. What are those French astronomers thinking? To send a rocket and launch such a small telescope to orbit the Earth? The telescope is no bigger than those amateur astronomers have. 30 centimeters in diameter. But these telescopes observe the Earth's surface, and what they can do is limited. The same telescope in outer space can do much more. It can precisely measure the brightness of stars. If a planet goes in front of a star, partially covering its surface, the telescope will register it. And so when those astronomers who worked with this telescope discovered the seventh planet circling one little-known star in 2009, they realized that this planet resembles the Earth. But it was super close to its star. So close that it takes 20 hours for this planet to circle its star. Something which takes one year for our planet. Just imagine, in less than a day, a planet circles its star. It is located in the constellation of Monoceros. It was the smallest exoplanet known at that time of its discovery, its radius being about 1.58 times longer than that of the Earth. The distance between the planet and its star is 2.54 million kilometers, which is 23 times closer than the distance between Mercury and the Sun. The fact that it's so close affects its temperature which is 2.5 thousand degrees Celsius. Oh boy! Koro T7b is always facing its star with one side and has it in tidal locking. If you were to observe from the lit side of the planet, you would see a giant sun, 360 times bigger than it appears in our sky. A giant sun which is always in the ascendant and doesn't move. A sun with no sunrise or sunset. A little bit farther from the lit side, there is a relatively comfortable area. Here, lava becomes solid, making cliffs, and it's always dark. But this sweet spot is very narrow. Immediately, there comes the dark side of the planet, which faces outer space and doesn't see a speck of light. In contrast to hot Jupiters, which have gas structure, the temperature on the sides of this planet is on two opposite extremes. Koro T7b is made of stone, which does not conduct heat from the star. The dark side of the planet doesn't heat and always has a temperature of about minus 235 degrees Celsius, making it a lifeless, icy, cold desert with eternal night. When astronomers calculated the planet's approximate density, it turned out to be over 10 grams per centimeters cubed. If you remember that the iron's density is a little bit less than 8 grams, you'll be astonished by this planet. 10 grams per centimeters cubed means it consists mostly of stone and iron. But iron is usually inside, 
just as it is with our planet. The iron core is then covered with stone. As for the atmosphere, it's clear that there isn't any. It's just stone. Think of the stone heated up to 2,500 degrees Celsius. What would happen to such a stone? The whole sunny side of the planet is like a huge boiling furnace. As it boils, it evaporates. The vapor goes higher, and high above, the temperature is lower than at the surface of the planet. The same goes for the atmosphere on Earth. Where we fly our planes, the temperature is minus 50 degrees Celsius. Here, it rains water, or sometimes it snows, but there, it rains cold, condensed stones. It rains freaking stones! Just imagine having stone droplets falling from the sky. This is amazing. This planet was nicknamed a planet of stone rain. One can just wonder where it came from. One idea is truly extraordinary. Once upon a time, this was a giant planet, much like our Jupiter. Once it came closer to the star, it was heated so much that the outer gas layers have evaporated into outer space, leaving an iron stone core. So it is thought it's a part of a giant planet. This was the picture that came to astronomers' minds when they saw this weird planet. Koro T7b is a world of extremes, two opposite hells in one place. It's hard to imagine harsher conditions. This is far from the weirdest planet discovered by astronomers. Subscribe to our channel and support us by liking this video so that we could release the next episode sooner.